Today's lesson in mastering CapCut is going to be a fun one. Grab your notes and let's get right into it. To make this video more fun, we're going to be editing a short video while I explain some of the tools you'll need when editing in CapCut. Before starting to build the story of any video, we'll need a sound. This can be a voiceover or music. In my case, I have a specific voiceover that I want us to edit. So here is my voiceover. It's an MP4 format, but I'm going to extract the audio. Just like we covered in the first lesson, first, you're going to drag and drop the clip onto the timeline to start editing. Let's delete the existing clip and place the voiceover on the main layer. Let me play the audio for you so we can identify what needs to be fixed. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. As you could hear, the voiceover is clean, but it's very boring and sounds fake. We need to get rid of all the pauses or silence in the audio. What we'll be doing here will also help you when editing your talking head video, especially if it has a lot of silence or mistakes. First, let's zoom in on the timeline to clearly see the silent moments. You can use shortcut keys to zoom in. If you look closely, you'll notice a waveform, which indicates that the video has sound. To see it better, let's first select the video on the timeline, right-click, and choose Extract Audio. Now the waveforms are more visible. Wherever there's a gap in the waveform, that's the silence we need to cut out to improve our audio. Let me quickly delete this black screen and place an entertaining video instead. And let me zoom out on the timeline a little bit. Now, let's identify all the gaps and start cutting them out. We'll use the method I taught you in our first lesson. Simply move the playhead to the end of the first sentence. Make sure the audio is selected and press the split button. Now, move the playhead right before the second sentence and press Q on your keyboard to delete the left section. You're going to repeat this process for the rest of the silent moments. Now that we have eliminated all the silence, we're going to bring the audio clips closer together so the audio has a faster pace. Let's play to see if it sounds good. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject. We'll keep adjusting until we are happy with the voiceover, but I like to leave a little bit of space to allow for breathing moments. Thing in life, whether it's a school subject. That sounds much better than before. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. Let's trim the beginning of the video so the voiceover starts right when the video begins. Let's select the other pieces of audio and move them closer together. We'll also combine all these pieces into one audio track. Select all the pieces, right click, and choose Create Compound Clip. Now it looks much better. Next, you're gonna select the audio and move to the right menu. We're gonna focus because there are some great tools to improve our project. Let's start with the Speed tab. Here, you can adjust the speed of your audio by moving the slider to the right to speed it up. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube. That's it. Let's bring the audio speed back to normal. The second tab is the voice changer. There are many AI voices you can try, but the voices in the free version tend to be more robotic. The basic tab is the most important for us because there are a couple of cool things you can do here. First, we have the volume option. Notice that whenever we increase the volume, the waveforms also increase in size. However, when I increase the volume all the way up, you'll see some orange or red color at the top of the waveforms, indicating that the sound is above normal gain, which means it'll be too loud and noisy. It's better to manually reduce the volume until most of the orange waves disappear. There's also an automatic tool called Normalize Loudness, which works but isn't perfect. Below that, there's Reduce Noise. This tool works like magic once it's enabled. It gets rid of ambient noises in your audio, such as wind or background noise. Separate audio is a pro feature, so I won't talk about it. But for all the pro users out there, don't worry. 
I'll show you some cool pro features once I'm done teaching everyone. Now that the audio is ready, we're going to start building our video. Let's zoom in on the timeline. To build a great story, we need to listen to the voiceover and use relevant clips to match the story. I have a couple of videos here in my media pool, and I'm going to try to match them to the audio. Before starting the editing, always make sure you have all the relevant assets. For me, I simply downloaded copyright free stock videos. I'll leave the link to the website in the description below. Now let's play the video. Master anything in life. The first sentence is about mastering anything in life. So I'm going to match the audio with this video of an Asian master. It makes more sense to use him to represent mastering. Let's drag the video and place it on the timeline. Since the video is too long, we're going to trim it. First, let me cut out the black screen at the beginning by placing the playhead there and pressing Q on the keyboard. Now we're going to zoom in and move the playhead right before the second sentence begins. Select the video and delete right. Now we have our first sentence of the voiceover matched to the video. Let's watch it. To master anything in life. Looks great. Let's place a clip of a student studying. Make sure to move the playhead before the beginning of the third sentence. I'll drag and drop this close-up video of a woman who appears to be studying. Let's delete the extra clips. We're going to do this for the rest of the clip. Always make sure to include the most interesting part of the video to have a solid story that will keep viewers engaged. Once done, let's zoom out and watch what we've created so far. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. Without any effects or transitions, the video already looks amazing because the timing of the video matches the audio well. There are a couple of adjustments we need to make to our video. I noticed that some clips aren't fully fitting in the frame, like this one. You can see some space at the top and bottom in the form of black bars. This is a simple adjustment. Just select the video, go to the right menu, and slowly increase the scale until the black lines disappear. Let's do this for the rest of the videos because we don't want inconsistencies in our final video. Now let's spice things up by adding an overlay of a YouTube logo. Video editors commonly use overlays to add depth, context, or emphasis to their projects, making them more engaging and professional. With CapCut's available overlay features, you can easily add video and image overlays. Whenever she mentions YouTube, that's where we'll add a logo by dragging and dropping it onto the timeline. As usual, let's delete the rest of the layer after the YouTube audio. Scale the logo to your desired size and place it wherever you want. Let me show you some handy things you can do with the overlay. First, select the overlaying image and go to the right menu. Here, there are many options. First, there's scale. Under scale, you can rotate your image, but there's a faster way to rotate your video or image just click where it says rotate. You can easily rotate your image the way you want. This works on video files as well. Let's say I drag and drop this video onto the timeline. To rotate it, I'll first scale it smaller. Then make sure it's selected and click on the rotation button. It's so easy. Let me show you another cool trick that most new CapCut users struggle to find. Let's drag and drop another video onto the timeline. Let's say I wanna mirror this video meaning I want this person to appear on the right-hand side. All you need to do is select the video, and right next to Rotate, there's a mirror icon. When you click on it, the video flips horizontally. The video will play normally, even though it's mirrored. If you want to cancel the mirror effect, just click on the mirror icon again. Now let me show you how to crop a video. First, let me resize this clip we're using. For instance, I only want to crop the rest of the video so that only this person remains. What you can do is select the video you want to crop, then click on the icon that says Resize. The cropping interface will pop up, and from here, you can crop the video using the provided handles on all four sides of the video. Once you're done, click Confirm. Now, position it wherever you want. It looks fantastic. To master anything in life, whether it's a school subject, soccer, YouTube, or even software like CapCut, you need to put in the work. Practice and continuous learning are what will set you apart from others. Tomorrow, 
We'll start with some pro-level editing. Make sure to tune in.